All right. Hi, James. How are you? Hey, Douglas. How are you? I'm good. Ah, doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me, for having me. I see Led Zeppelin back there. Are you a Zeppelin fan? Oh, yes. Die oh. Hard. All right. Made the Zeppelin fly forever. Yeah, they were the best band. I saw them three times in the 70s. Ah, uh, I, I actually never seen the band uh, as a whole. I have seen Robert Plant and I seen Jimmy Page after, you know, Bottom's death. Yeah. So if I ever create that time machine, I'm going back to 1975 and hooking up with the Zeppelin. Oh, definitely. Or even you go back to 1973 and go to Madison Square Garden for that. Oh, yes. Yeah, the Song Remains the Same concert. That was incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what what was the song? Not What Is It Should Never Be. Uh, what was the other one that they did? Uh, Since I've Been Loving You. Since I've Been Loving You, yeah. Yeah, that's the one they did in 73 at the Garden. Yeah. Ah, great, great song. Uh, they were at their, at their peak at that point, yeah. Between about 73 and 78, they were just untouchable. Absolutely, yep. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you. You are an author. Uh, you also have a publishing company called Rock Hill Publishing. Is your publishing, I want to talk about your publishing company for a little and then we can get to your book that you're promoting, okay? Um, okay. Just, I kind of want to get an idea of your publishing company. Is it a, sort of one of those hybrid, the new sort of hybrid publishing companies that have been popping up uh, that I've been hearing about where it's somewhere in between somebody self-publishing and a traditional publishing house? Yeah, so sort of. we're an independent small publisher house. So, you know, we go with the small publishing uh, idea, but we publish traditionally. In other words, we don't charge the authors or anything like that for any of the services. Uh, we absorb all the costs and everything to put out the books. And we split the royalties like a regular uh, publishing house. So we give them a little better split on the royalties because as an author, I think the author should get a good share of their, of their money for their work. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. What is the, now I have no idea, what is the typical split from a traditional publisher, like from one of the big five? What do they normally pay on a split? Oh, it could range anywhere from like 3% or so to maybe five. I think they're being generous, or they think they're being generous. They give you like a 10% split. But if you're a new author, you're probably walking in the door with like a 3% split or 5% split on the royalties. They keep most of the money. Wow. So for every dollar in sales, you get three cents? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's why authors are poor. <laughs> that is bad, yeah. It's, it's different than music, though, because in music, there's, a, there's two different categories, the songwriter category and the performance royalty. And the songwriters always get a 50% right off the top. Yeah. But the yeah, authors don't get do. that, right? Yeah. Well, see, the thing with songwriters are if you write and sing the song, then hopefully you're getting a better uh, share of the money. Because in the music industry, too, sometimes the music company keeps most of those royalties and you don't own your own song. Right. Uh, I think it's, who is it now? Um, Taylor Swift, who had to go back and buy back her own songs. And she's re-recorded them because of the fact that she didn't own the song rights yes. and to her own songs. Yeah. And so it, it's really hard when you're a new artist in any type of uh, uh, artistic work because the artist is usually the one who gets screwed <laughs> in this world, you know? That's true. And, it's and that so is true. bad news. So publishing companies, they tend to, and and I understand we're taking the we're taking a risk. We're putting up the monies. We're we're you know doing all the promotional work and things like that. But still, the artist is the one who's producing the work that you're promoting. So I don't really see how publishing company could grab not only a lion's share, but you know. The scraps too, and and leave the artist, you know, with nothing. Right. It it should be it should be a one hand washes the other kind of deal because equally one isn't much good without the other. 
Yeah. Um, but the, the publishers seem to uh, not agree with that philosophy at all. So when you get to independent houses and, like you say, hybrid houses, and a hybrid is that they charge the, the author for some of the services. You know, they'll charge for editing. They'll charge for right. the covers and all that kind of stuff. And a traditional publisher, they put out all that stuff. They, they create all that stuff for you. They give you the editors and stuff. But then, of course, they keep the money. So uh, <laughs> as an independent, yeah, I put out the money. I have the editors. I, I create the book covers. I do all the things that the publisher should do. I just don't charge the authors for it or I don't, you know, try to keep all the money. Okay. How many, uh, how many authors do you have? Do you, have you signed? Uh, offhand, I would say eight or nine. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, we did real good during COVID. I got five of my uh, people who was on the waiting list who we were publishing. I got five books out in 2020 because of COVID, because my editor wound up stuck here. She's from South Africa, so she comes back and forth oh. every uh, couple of months to do work with me and everything. Yeah, And she came here in January and COVID hit and she'd been stuck here. So it, it worked out well for, for me and for us publishing books because of the fact we was able to work hand in hand. Whereas when she's in South Africa, it's a couple of hours here and a couple of hours there because the time differences. Well, I think COVID also uh, encouraged a lot of people who were in lockdown to finish that book they've been meaning to write for the last 20 years. And all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of books on the market that need to be published and things. I've had more authors on this show in the last eight months. It's been unbelievable. Uh, all the authors that are coming out with new books and all COVID inspired. You know, they said, oh, well, I had <laughs> well, time to sit at home. I'm one and, of them. Yeah. Although my book was already well into development. I just took time off to publish other people's books. So. But since I was in lockdown and everything else, like everyone else, I was able to go back and say, OK, let me work on this book. I have time now. And, you know, you'd be surprised how much time you have if you don't have to drive to work. <laughs> oh, it's very true. Well, let's do that. Let's let's talk about your book. Why don't you hold up the book that you're promoting on the show today? Do you have it there? Uh, no, because it's still being developed. But oh. I have my other two books. OK, well, whatever you series, got. So I'll hold them up. And let's see. There we go. Try not to get the blur. There we are. OK. And this is the first book, Killer with a Heart. And then we have Killer with Three Heads. So those are the first two books in the Killer series. And the third book coming out is called Killer with Black Blood. And that'll be out July 6th, which is yours truly's birthday. So it's going to be a birthday present to the world. Can you give us like a one minute uh, overview of the series? What's it about? OK, well, the overview of the series is that is two guys who grew up. Uh, they, they become friends in like their teenage years, high school. And one guy is the son of a mafia uh, boss. And the other guy comes out of the South Bronx. Uh, I'm from New York originally. And he comes out of the South Bronx, out of the ganglands, out of the gangs in the South Bronx. And they team up as, because they move into the same neighborhood, so they kind of like team up in this world of crime. And the books, the story starts off with Killer with a Heart, where uh, Nicky, Nicky Nails, he's the son of the mob, and he uh, decides he wants to rob a money drop, a mafia money drop, because he thinks that they're skimming money off of another family. So he figures it's fair game, he can rob them. And in doing so, he sparks a mob war. And now Bulletproof Morris Mojo Johnson, which is his handle. <laughs> nice name. <laughs> that's his street name. Uh, he gets the name Bulletproof because he survives a mob hit. And uh, so he picks up another nickname, Bulletproof. And so they team up together and they cause this mob war. And they both are intent on rising to the top of the criminal world, organized crime. And that's what the series is about. It's about these two guys who go through these different uh, iterations of crime and, and things like that, and how they become mobsters and, and gangsters and international criminals. 
Well, obviously this sounds like it'd make a great movie series. Have you shopped these around at all? Uh, yeah, I'm on Story Rocket, which is a movie platform for writers and, and producers and stuff. So I'm on there and I've been on there for a couple of years. And I also shopped them around in Hollywood for a while, for a couple of years ago and in New York. And I thought that maybe in New York they would pick me up for it. But uh, so far, not too many people have uh, hit me up for anything. But I'm thinking, and there's one more book to come up. So I'm thinking once the series is done, I'll probably have a better shot at, at you know, getting a movie deal out of it. But the third book, uh, Kill With Black Blood, is about Nikki's rise to becoming the godfather. So the first one is they team up together. The second one, they kill it with three heads, which is more uh, Mojo's story. And then the third one, they kill it with black blood, which is more Nikki's story. And then there's the fourth one coming out, which is kill it with ice eyes. And I'll just say it's, it's a culmination of the whole uh, series. And I'll leave it at that. You'll, you'll have to tune in later to find out about that one. Well, let me ask you one question for comparison's sake. If you had to compare your book series to either The Godfather or Goodfellas, which one is it closer to? It's more like The Goodfellas meets uh, Boys in the Hood. Goodfellas meet Boys in the Hood. Oh, okay. The Godfather, uh, and I love The Godfather movie. I also love uh, Goodfellas and Casino. And it's more, it's more, of the the mixture of as they already e exist as the mob already exists like in goodfellows it was their stories of how they would manipulate uh have you ever seen a movie called Bronx Tale? yes great with De Niro? Movie. Yeah. yeah it 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 will remind you of Bronx Tale also oh yeah that was a super movie i love that movie yeah i love De Niro. he's he's a great actor pacino De Niro, you know if I can get them a little younger, maybe they'll play the parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got Martin Scorsese's phone number handy, he'd probably be the one to, to send the books to. Oh, yeah. yeah. If I could find Scorsese, I would definitely send him the book. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, the final one in the series will be out, you said July, right? Well, the, the next one in the series will be out in July. Oh, Black not... Blood is the third uh, book in the series. How many do you plan on writing for the series? Four. Four, okay. All yeah, right. so the so the fourth book will be out next year. It's already in production. It's already been written, and I'm going through uh, editing and rewrites and things like that. Well, we do have to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Yeah. For your can... publishing company or for the books or whichever you want? Oh, well, you can go to rockhillpublishing.com. And you can find all the Rock Hill books there, including the Killer series and, and my other books. I also write sci-fi and fantasy. And you can go to my uh, website, which is jlhillbooks.com, dash books.com, I think. But just go to Rock Hill Publishing. You'll find me there. It's, it's the easiest way. Okay. And links to your social media and everything is there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Well, James, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you. Nice talking to you. Nice meeting oh, a, a fellow Led Zeppelin fan, too. Always oh, yeah. happy about